I have had this idea for a while that I wanted to try. And uh, honestly, this dates back a couple of years. Uh, so back when I was first approached by Horizon Hobby to uh, build a project, something special, this is, this airplane, the, the Hangar 9 F6F Hellcat, was newly released on the market. And I thought, how cool would it be to try to do folding wings? At the time, because it had just been released, they couldn't keep them on the shelves. <laughs> and uh, so they suggested that I choose something else. And that's why I did the P-47, which also turned out to be something spectacular. So, um, yeah, I've wanted to do this for a while, a number of years now. Now, I don't know what I'm doing entirely in terms of like engineering this particular type of thing, but I'm fortunate to have really good friends who are. And basically what we ended up with was a very simple 3D print uh, with two pieces and a linear actuator. Now, I also have uh, wonderful friends at Dubro and they supplied me with a whole bunch of their heavy duty ball link connectors because that's really the only thing that was gonna be even remotely sturdy enough for this. Uh, so with a whole bunch of those, I started doing prototypes and this is basically the culmination of that. Now we tried different printing as well, orientations for strength, um, set it on stuff that, that works really quite well. Tolerances were great. Um, so once I had two linear actuators and two hinges, it was just a, a matter of fi finding the right time, <laughs> the right amount of time to, uh, to do this. So there, there are specifically like these, these little things, uh, templates to uh, print out on my, my large format printer. And I was able to wrap this around the wing and line it up with the wing root and uh, cut it that way. Now, I, I will also say that uh, I, I, because I'm blessed with really great friends in this hobby, um, Horizon trusted me with the CAD files for the for the wing. And uh, don't don't ask. Uh, I'm not going to use them uh, for anything. Um, Ben's not going to use them for anything. We only did this solely as a study for this wing hinge. And the reason we wanted to do this is because we've really only seen this once before on Banana Hobby Airplane, really. I mean, it, yes, using the linear actuator and automating it is not scale. I know this, but I wanted to try something I've never done before. I've never done a folding wing, let alone something as complex as a Grumman folding wing. And I, I just wanted to learn. So with that, you know, at this point I now have a folding wing okay i mean it, it definitely folds it's not pretty um there's a number of things inherently wrong with this that make it just way too complicated for this model as a 3d print it's perfect for a study you would have to 3d print this in aluminum to make it strong enough i think the 3d printed aluminum would be just fine uh cnc machine sure that that could work too um, infinitely more expensive to do it that way. But I, I mean, as it is, there's so many things that collide and t tolerances. I mean, we're talking like under a millimeter level tolerances, just, just when you're in this, this folded position to get it to move. Like I have to move it up a millimeter, like right here, just to, just to get it to move. So like you're talking about having to bevel things just right. I mean, it's crazy how much work this would take to make a functioning wing for a flying model. So all of this aside, number one, again, huge thank you to Ben for helping me with this because I really couldn't do it any other way. Ben does some fantastic stuff on his YouTube channel. So check him out if you haven't already. Uh, the other thing I want to thank, again, Dubro for supplying me with uh, so, some parts to do this. Because, again, this was a shot in the dark. Like, I had no idea what was going to be involved in this. These are not cheap parts, but I, if it was going to work, I wanted to make sure that I was using the best that I could, aside from going absolutely bananas. That being said, the failure point on the hinge mechanism was actually... Uh, right here in the 3D print. 
<laughs> it was right here where it, it, it broke off uh, when uh, a portion of the wing bound up when I was cycling through. So at this point, you know, the, the linear actuators, I can repurpose them and try them for something else down the road in the future, which is cool. I've always wanted to play with them and do some, some fun scale features. Um, got some other builds coming up. Maybe I can throw it there, do something fun as well. But for now, I'm just going to, I'm going to take you off the tripod and I'm going to show you up close what I mean by some of these really tight tolerances. Cause I think it's interesting. The, the title of this, of the, of the video is, you know, it, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Like we can go all over the place. Yeah. I cut this wing in half for no good reason. Well, it's a lot of really good reasons. And primarily it was a, the, the reason was to learn. And I learned so much with this. Let me get you off the tripod and we'll dive into some more details here. Right off the bat, you can see that I had to do quite a bit of modification just to get things to work here. Uh, I had to remove a portion of the skin on the top and the bottom just to be able to get this plate into position and get just two screws, let alone four. Like there are, there are two more screws back here that I would have to put in and that would require much more modification. But like I had to, uh, I had to trim the ribs just to get that in there in position. And again, that was, that was sort of blind before I started going in uh, with removing the skin. But then here's, here's sort of the meat and potatoes. So yeah, I had, I had to remove the wheel well, and obviously I had to cut into the spar. That's, that's, that's beside the point. I was going to try to cut the aluminum spar and we would have a sliding piece of carbon fiber tube that would go in to lock the wing in position for flying because the torsional, that's not a whole lot of force. It's really the spar that, that is compromised at this point once you make this cut. So then, uh, you know, ju just to show you how tight things are. So we've got a broken, a broken piece of wood right here. And just to demonstrate like so that's how tight it was like that's what broke there and then like all of this all of this wood had to be trimmed like i trimmed a little bit at a time on purpose because i didn't know what needed to be removed and what didn't but then like just look look at this look at this edge here how close that is it's crazy and all of that then it's got to go all the way. Then you look at how. Then look at how close this is. You get to this point, and you're like, "Holy smokes!" And that's scraping along. So there's just there's so much to this. To be fair, all, I I did buy like covering film to do this proper, like recover it so that everything would match and it would look stock from the pack. Oh, you didn't know that Hangar Nine offered this as an option. You know, that would be kind of a funny thing to do, but I, I, again, the, as you can see from all of the modification that I've done so far to further do it, I'd weaken it even more. It would become even more complex and even more delicate. And for a flying model, you, you can't have too much delicate. This is, this is already to the point of delicate where I wouldn't feel comfortable flying it uh, let alone even taxiing it around in the pits. Cause I mean, the, the mounting point for the landing gear is here. And with only this portion, and that's not even connected to the, to the spar anymore. So like if I were to land the likelihood of this transferring energy to here, so that would have to transfer to here, then to here. So rather than transferring energy straight back into the spar through this ply rib, you're making a triangular. I, I mean, it, it's just really, really complicated and not safe. So I'm doing the responsible thing. I'm sharing what I've learned because it's cool. It's super, super cool. But yeah, it's not practical. <laughs> it's not practical at all. Um, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I, I'm a hobbyist at best. Uh, I am a scientist, but a bio, more of a biologist, virologist kind of scientist. Um, <laughs> so I encourage you guys 
to take this as a lesson for yourselves because you should never be afraid to try new things. This is one wing of one model and currently I can still get replacements for it. So a $75 replacement wing is worth how much I learned from this experience. So just because, yeah, I've got to take this wing and throw it in the garbage, what I learned from this process is completely invaluable. So with that said, keep working on your flying works of art and making them absolutely the very best that you can and keep learning with them and growing with them. Until next time, thanks for stopping by the shop.